This $25 million waterfront home is the epitome of Miami Beach paradise, but it is paradise at a price because rising tides and increasingly extreme storms may already be lowering its value. In fact, this home, just five miles inland in Miami's little Haiti, could actually be a better investment, according to a controversial new study. What we see here is a theory of climate gentrification. Harvard University's Jesse Keenan tracked the values of more than 100,000 single-family homes across Miami going back 45 years, and in a published study, coined the term climate gentrification. So you're saying home prices are already falling 10% because of climate change? 10% to where they would have been had there not been climate change. Evidence, he says, that climate change is altering home values both on the coast and inland. What we found is that the higher elevation properties are essentially uh, worth more now, increasingly, will be worth more likely in the future. Because multiple predictions like this one from Climate Central are dire. The ocean overtaking vast swaths of Miami in just the next few decades. Precisely, Keenan argues, why climate gentrification, that is, wealthier investors displacing low-income residents in high-elevation neighborhoods, is already happening in Little Haiti. Fabiola Florenville is a real estate investor and community activist in the area. All the community sees is just new people buying up properties, raising their property values and property taxes, pricing them out. On this street, most of the homes are valued around $100,000, but this home, renovated by an investor, is listed for sale at $559,000. Its value has almost doubled in just the last three years, and the neighborhood around it is upgrading as well. You have longtime commercial tenants who have been here for 10, 15, 20 years, and new investors and developers no longer want their rent checks. Why? Because now they're redeveloping it. Part of what's behind the gentrification here is just the current trend toward urbanism. But it is also scenes like this from last year, Miami narrowly missing a direct hit from Hurricane Irma. Valuable new properties in the heart of its growing downtown were underwater. I would say water for a firm like ours is becoming a, a decision maker as it relates to strategies for investment. Miami native David Martin is president of Terra Group, a commercial and residential developer. He just finished a luxury waterfront condo and is building more next door. He claims these towers will actually help protect Miami from water. We look at areas that are on the beach and along the coast and we say, well, how can we fortify these buildings? How can we create incremental tax revenues from these areas along the beach or along the coast and start reinvesting that incremental tax dollar into the infrastructure in order to make those neighborhoods more resilient. Miami is already investing nearly $200 million into resilience, installing pump stations and upgrading its infrastructure. Miami Beach is on track to spend twice that, raising sidewalks and seawalls. The money is coming from new bonds, voters raising their own property taxes to protect their property. But Martin is also starting a new project here on much higher ground, a $162 million residential and commercial development on five acres adjoining a metro rail station. Are you hedging your bets? I think there's opportunities in both areas. Because while values are rising up here, demand is still high on the coast. Real estate agent Danny Hertzberg doesn't fully buy the climate gentrification thesis, but admits his clients are more wary of rising water. The main change I see is that people are a lot more focused on new construction, modern homes, because the newer homes with our new code, they're at a higher elevation. So that's been a change. I don't think people are going to give up the beauty of living on the water.